Good morning, everyone. My name is Andrea Marcelli, security researcher, Cisco Talos. And today I'm here to present to you our paper, How Machine Learning is Solving the Binary Function Similarity Problem. This is a research that we have done in collaboration with the University of Eurocom. Binary function similarity is the problem of taking in input the binary representation of two functions and giving in output a numeric value that captures the similarity between them. And we define in this specific research two functions as similar if they come, if they are compiled from the same source code. It's a very interesting problem with several practical applications in reverse engineering, vulnerability detection, and malware clustering. Given the interest in the field, several researchers have worked on this topic and have published an astonishing number of papers. Uh, since these researchers come from different communities, like machine learning, program analysis, system security, they publish in different venues, and this brought to a fragmentation in the field. When we started studying this problem, uh, we identified the following ch challenges. First of, all, first, of, first of all, it was impossible to reproduce or replicate many of the previous results, and this is because most of the times the artifacts, like the code and data sets, are not available, or if they are available, uh, something like some particular components like the feature structure or the machine learning components are missing. Uh, also, when the evaluation uh, appears in the paper, um, it's, the results are often opaque, and this is due to many reasons. For example, different objectives, different settings, like comparing cross architectures versus cross optimizations, different concepts of similarities, and different granularities, like research paper focus on uh, function comparison, other on basic block comparison, and so on. And if we had these on top of different data sets, different metrics, different implementations, as a result, we have a very unclear situation where we don't know in which direction binary function similarity is heading. So the, the contribution of this paper is to provide the first measurement study of this field, and we do following three steps. First of all, we explore the existing body of research, we cluster the main approaches, we select the 10 most representative ones, uh, we re-implement them, and we compare them in a fair way. And to do this, we also build a new data set as a common benchmark. In terms of measuring function similarity, there are two main techniques that have been proposed. Uh, first technique is direct comparison, and it means that the methods, the methods take two functions in input, always two functions, but this limits the scalability of the approaches. On the other hand, there are indirect comparison methods, and the difference is that they uh, map the function into a low dimensional representation, and then they use some kind of similarity like Euclidean distance cosine similarity to measure the similarity between functions. That indirect comparison methods include fuzzy hashing and embeddings, and among the embeddings word, most famous one are code embeddings, takes in input a stream of tokens, and here we have the famous NLP models. And then the other side we have graph embeddings that take in input the function control graph. And the most prominent example are the graph neural network. In terms of extracting features from functions, there are several features. It comes a different cost of extraction. We have feature based on the code, feature based on the structure of the function, like the control flow graph. Uh, if we add features to the, to the nodes of the control flow graph, we have annotated control flow graph, and then we have also other feature like data flow analysis, dynamic analysis, symbolic execution, but those may be more expensive to run. When we look at the last six years of publications, we see a trend towards graph embedding, code embeddings, and a combination of them. And from this uh, picture, we selected 10 different uh, papers, 10 different approaches, and the, the criteria was mainly to cover different techniques, cover different feature extraction methods, and also to cover different research communities, because as I say, this was one of the previous issues. In terms of implementation, we wanted to have a fair evaluation, so implemented all the approaches in a uniform way. And for this, we used IDA Pro for the binary analysis, IDA Pro for the uh, scripting, TensorFlow and Jensen for the neural network implementation. 
And for the data set, we created two new data sets in order to have all the different compilation options. This means multiple compiler, multiple compiler versions, different optimization, different architecture and bitness, and also different software. One note regarding this, we want to release everything, but we are a bit behind the schedule. This is because we underestimated the effort of open sourcing within a big company. We had to review the entire code, so everything will come, but we need to be a little more patient on this. And sorry for, for the delay. Regarding the experiments, we identified six tasks to evaluate. Uh, just to give you an example, the cross-compiler task is a task where functions have different compiler, compiler versions, and optimizations, but they have the same architecture and bitness. And each task is evaluated using three different metrics, the AUC, mean or reciprocal rank, and the recall. So we take into account also the ranking metrics. And what we notice during the evaluation is that the function pair selection, that is how positive pairs and negative pairs are created, does impact the performances and is something that has not been highlighted in the past papers. When we look at the, the result, I would like to show you this plot that comes from one of the most challenging tasks, which is the cross mix task, where every variable, every compilation variable is free. And I would like to uh, get your attention to three main points. The first one is that not, not all the models support the cross architecture setup. So this, is, this matters when it comes to selecting which model to use. Second point is that when we talk about graph neural networks and annotated control flow graph, that is a control flow graph with basic block features, it's very important to select the proper features because Moving from manually feature engineered features to uh, a less complex type of feature to extract like the bag of words does change the results. And also in the third point, moving from one type of graph neural network to another type does impact the result as well. Now I would like to conclude with four takeaways. First of all, which is the main contribution of the machine learning solutions? Well, we, what we found out is that deep learning models are effective in terms of scalability and precision when it comes to computing function similarity. And these, they, are, they are effective uh, when they are used with the SMEs architecture and combined with the margin-based loss. And among the different coders, graph neural network are the most effective one, the one that have the best results. Second takeaway is about the different type of features. We, what we found out is that annotated control flow graph does provide the benefit, but there is a minimal difference when it comes to manually engineered features and uh, uh, simpler ones like a bag of word or the opcodes. This means that having expensive manually engineered features that does not provide any big advantage in any of the test cases that we evaluated. And also data flow information is very interesting and can boost the results for large functions. Third, take, third takeaway is about two different uh, tests, the cross architecture and the single architecture. And the question here, is cross ar architecture more complex than single architecture? Well, the short answer is no. All the machine learning models perform similarly on all the tasks. And most interesting, uh, we can train them only on the most generic task, and they can achieve performances that are close to the best for each other task. However, not all the models support the cross-architecture tests, in particular as to back and catalog are limited to a single architecture. And finally, which are the future direction for the research? Well, what we found out is that graph neural network provide the best results. However, this is a very active area of research where there are tens of different variants that need to be tested. So we encourage the community to work on this. The second is that combining graph neural network with other set of features like combination of intermediate representation and data flow information must be studied because it can improve the results. And finally, Training strategies and loss functions have been barely discussed in the past, 
and only recently some, research, some researchers started to explore them. And what we found out is that they're really important as much as the features and the model selection. And with this, I conclude my presentation. I really thank you for your attention. And now I'm happy to answer any question.